What's up? Welcome back. I got a video here pulled up from Cosmic Verse. Modern women begging to date. Women only leave men when they are not being taken care of, right? I've been ghosted once in my life. Him and I asked, like, hey, why did you ghost me? I want y'all to know <laughs> that dating sucks. I honestly cannot with men. Here I am. The struggles of modern dating continues as more women struggle to find a date. Social media has destroyed dating. I have cheated plenty of times in my life, by the way, but I'm a reformed cheater. I've never, I would never do it again. If you're ever having a hard day, just yes. remember, I've been cheating on I've Unrealistic expectations is what's keeping them single. Wake up to the real world. I tried to be supportive for Lily, I really did, but I wanted to kill myself. Women only leave men when they are not being taken care of, right? So when, when yeah. women aren't being emotionally taken care of, like they don't, women don't have affairs usually because they're like horny, right? Because guys will have sex anytime. They have affairs <laughs> because their emotional needs are not being met. The more that you can like take care of your wife and try to make her happy, do things that's nice for her, she won't go anywhere, right? And then the more that you do that, the more she's gonna wanna do the same for you. People always wear like, you're not doing this, or I'm not getting enough of this. But the more you give to that, your partner, the more they want to give to you. I've been married for almost 16 years now to my second husband and my last husband, like he's my world, you know, like I love him so much and I would never want to get divorced again. And some people are just narcissistic psychos. So they're going to cheat on you anyways. Like that was my first husband, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so she said her ex-husband cheated on her. Now, I wonder if you asked her if her logic would stay consistent. So if you asked her, well, did your, but, but, but we already know the answer because she immediately called this guy narcissist. So I would ask her, okay, so if your husband decided to cheat on you, then that must have meant you weren't taking care of him, right? Because according to your logic, what you just said, when women have affairs and when they leave their partners, it's because they weren't being taken care of. But of course, that logic, you can already tell, doesn't hold up on her end because she immediately called him a narcissistic psychopath because he cheated on her. So then basically that just means it's only one-sided. See, women only leave men if they aren't being taken care of. It's not because they too could perhaps be a narcissist psychopath or whatever and ultimately i'm tired of hearing this i am very happy to continually hammer away at this garbage that so many women want to be true so many women constantly blaming men for them initiating divorce so many women constantly blaming men for them leaving and then you'll see women also say oh he was, he was a great guy perfect nice guy but something was missing so i left him or i cheated on him many many such cases and ultimately Women do these things likely when they lose attraction, okay? It's it's that, in my opinion, is ultimately what's happening. They lose attraction. But women do not just lose attraction for men just because they didn't feel like they were being taken care of. It's definitely one of the reasons, but it's not the only reason, which is exactly what this woman said and plenty of other women say. And then they'll also go on the same hand and they'll say, it's okay to leave the good guy, right? So... You're full of shit and stop it. If you catch yourself complaining about the city you live in because you swear up and down that the city you live in has no good guys left, well, here's the sign from the universe. You have two options, either number one, move, or number two, You're the problem. create an abundant mindset when it comes to the city you live in and start to change your mind about how there are good guys out there and that this city does have a lot to offer. You just haven't found them yet and maybe change your routine and you will find. Notice how this woman is saying, change your routine, change your mindset and not just say, maybe you're the problem, right? It's kind of like she's walking on eggshells because she's probably talking to women. She's probably, she's saying two things are going on. Either A, move or B, you're the problem. Question I sometimes get asked, why are you single? Very easy to answer. Because in today's society, I don't fit in. Why, you ask? Because I have standards. Okay, this is for you if you feel like there are no good guys. No, you'll fit in just fine because, I mean, you're fitting in right now. You're literally going with the crowd by saying that. This is something everybody says. This is something all these ladies are saying is standards, standards, standards. So you actually fit in extremely well. You actually couldn't be standing out any less because you're, you know, you're parroting the same shit that other women do. Okay, this is for you if you feel like there are no good guys left out in the world. 
I promise you, there are. There are good men, there are kind men, there are compassionate men. Just don't settle. Don't settle, don't entertain <laughs> these clowns who, you know, just want to hang out with you and don't actually want to take you on dates. Don't even entertain them. Wait for the right one, the one who loves you and is kind to you and who values you. Do not even entertain the ones who don't do that. Sorry, but not sorry. The right one these women are waiting for aren't coming. The reason why these women are in this predicament in the first... Well, I don't really see anything wrong with what she just said. She says, I promise you there are good men. There are kind and compassionate men. Don't entertain these clowns who just want to hang out and not take you on dates. Wait for the right one, the one who loves you and is kind to you, the one who values you. But the thing is, right, it sounds good. It sounds good on paper. But ultimately, it's like there's a reason why a woman like this has to come on here and try to hammer this idea into these ladies' minds. Because it doesn't seem to be the type of man they naturally gravitate to, especially, you know, when they're young, hot, fit, and in their prime. And so as these women get older, it's like they go through different phases. And ultimately, when, once these women start to get older, it kind of seems like they start to prioritize companionship and partnership over the attraction triggers that were there that were very prominent when they were in their prime. And then as these women get older, they start to one, they start to become jaded by these men because they can't get the commitment from these guys. And then they start to prioritize companionship and partnership and long-term stability and this guy who shows up and is consistent and reliable and a man that makes these women feel comfortable and perhaps even have the upper hand in the relationship because that allows them to fall more into a comfortable position and knowing that they've got the upper hand this guy is not going anywhere. She doesn't have to worry about this guy perhaps stepping out. And he's going to be a reliable provider. He's a nice, good guy. And I guess he'll do for this stage of life. Men are giving up on dating. And one of the reasons why is because of women's expectations. One of the main reasons why women have such unrealistic expectations is because of social media. And let me tell you why. So women are often fueled by what they see on social media. It seems like everywhere you look online, there are images of perfect couples, luxury, exotic vacation, lavish gifts. And this is very, very toxic because this is not even real. It's just social media. And these things create an unrealistic standard for women because they expect that from a partner. And men feel like they need to be wealthy or constantly shower women with gifts to be able to measure up. And it's a lot of pressure. It can leave men thinking that they'll never be able to meet these expectations. And as a result, men are just giving up on dating because they feel like they can compete um, against those fantasy relationships that we see online. And I think it's very, very dangerous because it can lead to self-esteem issues as men feel like they're never gonna be good enough and this can result in anxiety, depression. So yeah, it's a very, very concerning problem. It's not that we can't compete. We see no reason to do it. It's not worth it. What do I get for all this investment? More expenses in divorce? No, they'll do everything they can to avoid accountability. Absolutely. And the fact that they think they can get better, good luck. I'm more than good enough. The women out there simply don't measure up for me. I'm... Well, you know, we hear a lot of people talk about how damaging prawn is to the minds of, oh, young men. And, okay, you know, I'm not saying that's not true. It's definitely not natural or normal to constantly be exposed to uh, people having sex and you not being included. And basically being someone who's watching people have sex, which is a whole different discussion. But, you know, we, con we constantly hear about how bad prawn is for men. But then what we're actually starting to see the conversation come up is that how damaging social media is for women. Because a lot of it boils down to women having FOMO, comparing each other's lifestyles, looking at, yes, what this woman said, what appears to be perfect relationships and luxurious relationships. And in many ways, setting unrealistic expectations. And a lot of what you see on 
these social media apps. And it kind of seems like Instagram is in a way dying off a little bit, at least for me. I don't, I'm not really on that that often. But Instagram was a really big driver in this. And basically, I think turning up the levels of everybody's like superficiality and materialism and specifically, I think what happened was is women started to be exposed to like luxury and these Instagram models living luxurious lifestyles while not knowing what's going on when they're really in Dubai and what's really going on behind the scenes. And yeah, you could say that social media is one of the reasons why a lot of men are choosing not to date, but a lot of it also is just them, right? It's just, it's, it's them. It's their mindset, it's how they behave, it's their expectations, it's their infidelity, it's their promiscuity. Juice isn't worth the squeeze in a lot of situations, their attitudes, the masculinity, just not that desirable in men's eyes. And then, of course, you start getting into marriage and, and all that nonsense and how that can play out. But I would say, yeah, social media is definitely doing a lot of damage to the minds of young women, definitely. Probably quite similar to how Pran is doing damage to men's minds. And that's why, you know, personally, I do my best not to watch that stuff. And generally, I, I do feel better when I go extensive periods of time not doing so. The top 10% so she had better have her act together. I agree. I gave up on dating. I get judged on everything. So I live my life. Already came to terms I may never have a wife, family. I've been saying this for years and I call it social media syndrome. Social media is always the downfall giving far too many options for them to walk away. Well, I think I was looking at an article today and it was like a Surgeon General was saying that he thinks we should put warning labels on social media the same way we do with cigarettes and tobacco. And I think he's... He, perhaps has a point. It's not worth the stress anymore. The women who leave their husbands or boyfriends thinking they can do better always come crawling back because the treatment and the love wasn't the same. They were fed a temporary dream that the grass was greener on the other side, but that's never the case. If a woman doesn't appreciate- Yeah, I mean, nobody, we didn't even mention women getting hit up in the DMs and men constantly reaching out to them and just how unnatural and how nothing like that existed prior to social media and how that alone is so detrimental to so many relationships. Social media, man, it is brutal. It has absolutely wrecked dating. You show her the door. If she doesn't reciprocate the energy, show her the door. Dating in the West is at an all times low. If you truly value yourself as a man, you're better off getting your passport and find love overseas. There's plenty of beautiful traditional women there. So why let the vampires suck you dry on this side? What's the worst thing a guy can do on a first date? If we're on a first date, uh... Listen, all right, before these chicks even open up their mouths, just look at them, just look at them. They got their tatas hanging out just this is a modern woman this is a modern woman that i mean look they're attractive sure but do you really want to be around them that often they look like airheads no thanks first date if we're on a first date and he makes me pay <laughs> there you go there you go these chicks are again it's like probably kind of like the gold digger type they all they all look the fucking same and just insufferable Go away, please. <laughs> okay. Um, so a lot of girls, once they start pushing that 30 mark, they're like, okay, I got to lower my standards a little bit because it's well, not working Well, because, you know, out. we have that pressure of time and right. eggs, and mm -hmm. I feel like society does a really good job of reminding us, reminding us of that, <laughs> yeah. that timeline. Like, always a bridesmaid, never yeah, a bride. Yeah. Right, There's and like, once you hit 30, your eggs start shriveling. And that's what I said earlier, right? As these women get older, they start to prioritize companionship and partnership and reliability and stability over trying to find a man who hits all of their attraction triggers and prioritizing that. And they start to prioritize just having someone so they don't really die alone and they can kind of trust that... He will be nice to them and won't go anywhere and probably won't cheat. And, you know, fair enough. That is how things change. 
But what it cannot be overlooked is that when these women are in their prime, these usually are not the men that they prioritize. And they also are likely coming to the realization that they can't command that man anymore, that perhaps maybe is very attractive to them, or they've become jaded to those men and develop a sort of hatred for those types of men because of what went wrong in the past, maybe because they never got the commitment from the guy. You know, a lot of reasons why as these women start getting older, they start to pursue and try to lock down a different type of man. Let's look at some of these comments here. Never forget promiscuity destroys a woman's ability to pair bond. Body count doesn't only matter, it's one of the most important things. Yeah, and of course, I'm sure you probably know about that study, and it's like once women's body counts start to go up, their uh, failure or infidelity rates start to increase. I don't negotiate with terrorists. They created hookup culture devoid of feeling, accountability, or respect. Now they're complaining about the fallout. Actions have consequences, and these are going to be dire consequences. Yeah, I mean, I would say the sexual revolution certainly gave room for this this hookup culture but i'm going to leave the video there so if you enjoyed it do me a favor and subscribe